Hey guys, Condivore here, and I got a whole mess of muzzle devices. Now, today we're going to be looking at what the flash looks like out of each of these muzzle devices and what the gas flow looks like out of each of these muzzle devices using a thermal camera. We're going to be using the exact same PMC X-TAC throughout this entire test. The only thing that's going to change is the muzzle device. The lighting remains consistent for this entire test, and the barrel temperature always starts at 120 degrees before the bout of shots, and always ends up around 160, give or take a couple of degrees. Now for everyone that just wants something to be mad about in the comments, um, I'll just say this really quick before your attention span runs out. First off, flash hiders work well at hiding flash. Second off, brakes do not work well at hiding flash. Third off, it seems like if it starts with a brake and it ends with a little flash hider, you get a brake. <laughs> so anyway, um, that should probably be enough that everyone with a theoretical degree in physics can tell me how wrong I am about something. For everyone else, let's get into some of this. I just have some kind of neat stuff to show you, and hopefully you guys enjoy this. So before we get into our testing here, let's go over one of these thermal images and talk about what we see in this thermal image so that everyone can be on the same page of what we're looking at here. Obviously, the visible flash is self-explanatory. Um, I did this testing in a covered range with a cloudy day, uniform temperature, uniform light. When it comes to the thermal imager, we have a little bit of a different story. Now, before every round of firing, I would check the temperature of the barrel to make sure it was around 120 degrees. It was always within two degrees of 120 degrees before I started firing, and it was always within two degrees of 160 degrees immediately after firing. Now, the thing that the thermal imager is showing you is the difference in temperature between things it sees. The cold back wall behind it, or relatively cold, it was probably around 60 degrees. The hot muzzle, because the muzzle is one of the hotter objects there. The gases, of course, and whatever else it happens to have in its shot, it'll show you a comparison between those temperatures. This becomes important because we're not measuring temperature with the thermal monocular. And if we were trying to measure temperature, we'd have to do it quite a bit differently, especially because we're comparing things of different densities. The muzzle and barrel of the rifle are made out of steel. Steel is very dense. Steel is going to be present there for a longer period of time. It's going to be able to put off more of the light that the thermal imager is retrieving and turning into an image showing us the relative heat. So the gas cloud being highlighted in front of a highlighted barrel where highlighting is showing the hottest objects in the frame both times does not mean the gas cloud is the same temperature as the barrel. The gas cloud can be significantly hotter and actually has to be significantly hotter because it's significantly less dense. You can't compare the temperature of a steel barrel to the temperature of the gas there. This is purely so that we can visualize where this gas is going because this gas is practically invisible when you're actually shooting. Another thing to keep in mind is we're working with frame rates here and frame rates can make things happen like weird cutoff frames where the camera was scanning through the pixels when the blast actually happened. This can result in a couple of weird quirks and I'll label them as they happen, but normally we seem to get most of the blast at least in one frame, though it might have slightly cooled by a rate of 1 50th of a second before we actually see the entire cloud. It's also important to note that the more you shoot in a short time period, the more the, the thermal camera is going to adjust to the hot gas in the environment. As the hot gas is kind of clouding around, it will change how that thermal camera visualizes the heat and will not necessarily mean that a highlight that they will highlight every flash that comes out of the muzzle. There are plenty of shots here that were shown with all white gas coming out and no highlighting to the gas that actually had a decent amount of flash to them. So anyway, let's get into it. I think you guys are ready to really fire through these now. So first off, we'll look at without any muzzle device. So I think that's about what we'd expect for no muzzle device. Obviously we've got a 16 inch barrel on this AR-15. There's quite a lot of time for powder to burn. We still have some leftover powder by the time you get to the end of the barrel, but we're seeing it just kind of spew out and you see a decent amount of flash after each of those shots. Next up, let's have a look at the A2 flash hider and see how it performs.
CA2 is quite a popular and effective muzzle device. Um, as we saw in that video, you can see that we have a blast that's quite a bit out front of it that tends to flash. There's also kind of an interesting thing going on with each of the slots in the A2. Um, obviously there's no slots on the bottom, so we see gas pushed upwards. Some people say that's a compensator effect. I don't even know if it does that much, but it is a thing. It's probably to prevent dust from being blown up or maybe something like that. But it's interesting seeing that we have flames appearing at the ends of each of these cutouts um, along with out in front of the muzzle device. So there's a reason these, these are very popular. They work quite well and they are very, they are quite small and they're very cheap. So anyway, that's the A2. That's a pretty effective flash hider. Let's move on to a dedicated flash hider, which is actually the one that's currently on this, which is the Bren 2MS style three prong flash hider. Let's see how, that, how well that works. So you know, the Bren 2 flash hider does quite a good job at eliminating flash off the muzzle. It does a really wide spread of gas and there's only one little spot on one of the tines that appears to get really hot according to the thermal camera, but it doesn't last very long. And it really almost eliminates all the flash. Now off the 16 inch barrel, we were seeing just a bead of flash right out in front. And it was significantly smaller than the, bead, the, the blast created by the, the A2, the flash we saw out in front of that. But granted, this is a larger muzzle device. The A2 still is extremely effective for its size. And you have these tines hanging out, which, yeah, I guess if you really beat on these, you could break them. But we don't have those flames collecting between the tines like we do on the A2. So, pretty solid. Now, let's step it up a little bit more. And we have another dedicated flash hider we're going to try out. This is a Strike Industries 4-prong, which I like to call the tuning fork because... Yeah, let's see how it does. And that's like a tinnitus simulator. If you don't have it already, that gives you the same ring. Perfect. So the Strike Industries 4-prong, I think they called it the Venom series or something like that. Uh, very effective flash hider. It really does eliminate basically all the visible flash, at least with the amount of light that we had shooting at the range when I was recording. Um, Performs better, definitely, than the Bren 2 flash hider and the A2, but obviously it comes with the cost. I'm going to muffle that because I'm so sick of listening to that, and I'm going to be sick of listening to that editing this as well. Uh, it rings a lot, and I don't think there's any sort of... I don't know if they... It looks like they almost varied the cuts in this a little bit so that it might not ring as much, but man, it just rings and rings and rings. So... Very effective, rings a lot. Um, let's see how the dead air three prong chemo mount does with the exact same test. So the chemo three prong has remained a very effective flash hider and I've even tried it on much shorter barrels too. It just eliminates practically all visible flash and medium light. Obviously, if you're shooting at night, you're going to see flash out of pretty much everything. Um, but it's been one of my go-tos, and that was before I tried all this. And I know everyone just always wants to justify that their stuff is the best, but I really think that this is quite an effective flash hider, and it does quite a good job, especially for a suppressor mount. Um, there is one big caveat. Obviously, any of you sharp-eyed viewers noticed that I was using a crush washer behind a chemo muzzle device. Never use a crush washer behind a chemo muzzle device or any suppressor mount muzzle device if you are going to mount a suppressor on it. That said, anything with a really tight bore, it's always a good idea to use shims instead of a crush washer. Crush washers don't necessarily crush uniformly. The shoulder on your barrel is where you want the back of this to rest if you need concentricity to be perfect. So. 
Do not use these with crush washers if you're mounting a suppressor. I did it just to save time. That said, this really doesn't have the ring. Oh no. This really doesn't have the ring of the four prong, which is really nice. Um, I think it has to do with the different weight, like size cuts. You can see these big cuts on the sides here, but you have three prongs, obviously much, much larger than an A2, almost twice as long, not quite, but it's getting there. Very effective muzzle device, seems to work really well. Now let's change it up a little bit. We have a compensator. Now this one's supposedly made for three gun. It's got holes in it. It looks like a tube. It's, it's threaded enough. I can get it on the Air 15. Let's see how it does. All right, so we're looking at the Stag 3G. I think that means three gun. I don't know. Um, stag compensator. I don't think they make these anymore, but it's basically a linear comp from the front and then a vertical comp from the top. So it's meant to push the barrel down. It's actually kind of interesting. Got a couple of frames of this actually shoving the barrel down, um, which I guess if you had something with a lot of muzzle climb, this kind of thing would help because we obviously see gas coming right out the front and right out the top, and we see flame coming out both. Um, see it getting pretty hot right up here, but yeah, this is obviously not meant to hide flash. This is meant to keep the muzzle pushed in a direction. Um, still quite interesting, but not exactly a great showing for flash hiding. Uh, obviously we're based mostly testing for that and not really considering other things. Didn't notice it being a whole lot blastier than the other stuff, um, than the other flash hiders, just had some really interesting gas flows, which I wanted to show you guys. Anyway, next up, we're gonna move on to brakes. And this one's a little brake. It's got a couple of little compensator holes in the top of it. This this came new with the Bren 805s, um, the CZ Bren 805s. Just kind of a simple, short, single chamber brake or dual chamber brake, I guess. But let's see how that does on the Air 15. So not really any surprises with the Brand 805 brake. Um, we see that we have gas expanding out the sides, which is what you'd expect with a brake. And it's all flame. Um, you don't have a ton of flame getting thrown forward, but um, I think it's because most of it gets diverted to the sides. We don't see a lot of action off these ports, maybe a tiny bit of gas, but they're pretty small. And these ones just send more flame out the sides. Um, recoil was noticeably a bit softer on these. Uh, blast to the shooter was a bit worse. Um, it always seems a little bit louder when you have more gas coming back at you. So that's all subjective though. Maybe we'll do an audio comparison at the end here, but it's not going to be volume related. It's mostly going to be a tone. So anyway, uh, the 805 brake does a decent job at what it's supposed to do, which is to be a small brake. And um, it works pretty well in the 805 as well, but I've seen it throw flame on the 805 plenty of times. So I knew it was capable of doing so. But anyway, we're going to go to a little bit of a more common brake that you might see on an Air 15. This is an Epsilon VG6 and 5.56. This is kind of a tight little, well, I'm going to call it a brake, but they say it's a compensator and everything in order for it to be like, you know, it can do everything. It does flash hiding at the end here, you know, but what really I think it's going to do is we're going to see what it does with the brake here. So let's see what that looks like. So the VG6 is a little interesting. It's a muzzle device that I've had a lot of experience with on a lot of different ARs. Um, it was one of my go-to muzzle devices for like, oh, you want to break, get this. Um, it doesn't do much flash hiding for anything on the sides. I know it's one of the kind of features is that it's got that little prong thing on the end. I guess forward it does a bit, but it's so big out the sides that I don't know if it's going to really help too much. Um, it's just, it's just really bright. You know that you get the, uh, you get this really hot spot up front here, which is kind of interesting how, how hot some of those front baffle, that uh, front baffle does get, um, on this. So kind of an interesting thing, but yeah, it's not, it's not a flash hider. It does work as a brake. It is, feels quite loud at the shooter and quite a bit of reduced recoil. I've always used these just strictly as brakes. So anyway, we have a simple single chamber brake. This is a Chemo Micro. It's actually a 9mm caliber brake. 
I like these for rifles that I'm trying to keep the overall length short because you can take something like this and get a break in a bit of a smaller format. If you're trying to fit it in a tight case, these work pretty well. So let's see how this does on camera and thermal. So the key micro brake, nothing really revolutionary there. Single chamber brake. Blasting out the sides. Quite a bit of flame out front, but that's probably assisted by that big 9mm hole. Or it's probably a little bit over 9mm. Um, not too much to say on this. It was fairly blasty, but not horrible. I'd say probably a little bit less blast feel than the um, VG6 Epsilon. But it's still brake, lots of flash, lots of gas movement, and we still have that big flame popping out the front. So not a whole lot to say on this one. Uh, these are worked really well for me for brakes that I wanted to put on shorter things and keep the overall length down when I'm not using a zero length that's just the body of chemo and a flat end. So next up and last but not least, we're going to be doing the Lantac Dragon. Um, this is a three chamber brake. Got a couple ports on it, and it's got a little bit of fl attempt at flash hide at the end, it looks like. Uh, so we'll see how this one does. So let's have a look. So I gotta admit, I do have a soft spot for the Lantac Dragon. I have enjoyed using this um, muzzle device on quite a few longer 5.56s just to basically eliminate most of the recoil. Um, it definitely makes it blastier at the shooter, and it throws a lot of fire out the sides. Uh, but one of the things is that if you're using this in a suppressor, that might not matter to you as much. And, it, you know, I, I don't actually know if there's much of an effect that the muzzle device inside of a suppressor has on the suppressor's effectiveness. That is something maybe we can try out in the future. But to be said, this is a effective break that definitely blasts back and causes a lot of flame out the sides. The little attempt at, I don't know if this is even an attempt at flash hiding or if it's more of like a, oh, maybe you could get a wire of a fence between those and shoot it. I don't even think that would work from the angle, but you know, it might just be a stylistic thing. It doesn't really do any flash hiding. It just blasts. Um, you can see these two ports at the top. We actually see a little bit of gas coming out the top from those, but you know, it's, it's a break. It does break things. And once again, this is of course a chemo device that I put on a crush washer just because I knew I wasn't going to be putting a suppressor on during this range session with these devices. Obviously, you use shims if you're going to do that. But anyway, guys, that concludes what I got. Um, all these muzzle devices, had a good time testing them all. Um, I did try to test the T91 muzzle device and found out that there is a lip inside there that only lets you thread in about halfway the distance that I needed to go to get to the shoulder on my barrel, maybe a little bit further than that. But, um, so maybe I'll test this one in the future, but I need to bring a lock nut with me. Of all these, you know, I think definitely the most effective flash hider for me is the three prong, but that's subject to change. I'd love to test more things. Um, obviously I can't just go out and buy everything because I, um, that would be irresponsible. So, I'll see if I have other examples of flash hiders. If you guys have something you want to see tried um, and compared potentially, let me know in the comments. Um, I'd be happy to potentially try something in the future. If you guys have any questions or want to see any anything else or any more details, let me know. I'd be happy to answer. Happy to talk with you guys. Hope you guys all have a good weekend. I'll see you all.